how are you doing? Um, we're going to look at some blood vessels. We talk in anatomy a lot about how arteries have got muscular walls and veins have got less muscular walls. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's have a look down the microscope and, and see what that see what that actually looks like. Um, I've got a slide here that says artery and vein thin section. So the aim of these videos is to have a nice relaxed look at, uh, at these tissues, right? So we were looking at the tissues the other week and we looked at the four main tissue types of the body. So if we look at blood vessels, they're made up of most of those tissue types, right? That's a bit, that seems a bit bright. Um, ooh. And of course this used to be my job before I was teaching anatomy. So you gotta, I gotta watch out for my enthusiasm getting away from me. But um, hey look, there's a circle-ish, circle-ish shape. Um, oh, and there's another circle-ish shape. So these are circles with, with a lumen with a hole in the middle. So we've cut, there's a transverse section. We've cut through a tube transversely here, haven't we? So there's two different tubes. Now we often find arteries and veins running alongside one another. And look, if we go a little bit further away, we can find some smaller versions of the same thing. So the aim here is to not go into massive detail, but to absolutely talk about the structures, the layers, the, the cells that make up a blood vessel. Right, let's start with, uh, with this one first. Um, should we zoom in a little bit? If you can see that, I'll, I'll go to a higher power in a moment, but can you see that the, 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 the layer of cells lining the lumen, the inside of the tube, is quite wiggly, is quite folded, right? Now that suggests that that's, um, that's something that can not stretch, but it can expand, it can become a bigger tube. Most cells in the body aren't stretchy, most tissues in the body aren't stretchy. But if you've got a folded tissue, you can flatten it out. So you can make that lumen larger by making it less folded. Now what's actually happened here, this is an artery, this is a small artery that we're looking at here. And it's quite muscular, so that's an artery. That's a vein. And when we say that arteries have got more muscle in their walls, that's what we're seeing here in this artery. We're seeing more muscle in the wall. Um, and that muscle then has contracted a little bit. And that's what's giving us the smaller lumen and the, the wrinkly lining. So the lining that we're looking at there, the, the, the layer of cells closest to the lumen, closest to the center, um, those are endothelial cells. And endothelial cells are like an epithelium, but strictly speaking, they're not an epithelium um, because an epithelium comes from ectoderm or endoderm. Um, these endothelial cells come from mesoderm. Endo just means inside, meso just means middle, ecto just means outside. So these endothelial sites, these endothelial cells are lining an internal tube inside us. It's not an external tube inside us. And they are very flat. These are squamous cells. And the endothelium is really important. Um, we, ha we have found recently they, they do have lots of other functions, but the endothelium is in contact with the blood and the blood does not clot in when it's in contact with the endothelium. So that's really important. Um, and then these layers uh, on the other side of the epithelium are the muscle layers and they are smooth muscle cells. We looked at muscle the other, the other week. Um, and we looked at cardiac muscle and we looked at um, skeletal muscle. And we looked at smooth muscle and smooth muscle, they're individual cells. I don't know if you can get a sense here, but these muscle cells are running in a ring around the artery. Now these smooth muscle cells then, they are 
autonomic muscles, they're under autonomic control. So when we talk about vasodilation and vasoconstriction, it's these guys that are responsible. So muscle's a good building block. This means that uh, the muscle here means we're making a good tube that's able to resist the high pressures of the arterial blood inside the tube. Also, this smooth muscle can contract and change the diameter of the tube to let more blood through or less blood through. So vasoconstriction, the sympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nerves. So we've got we've got sympathetic nerves in here. We're not we're not. I'm not going to point them out on this section, but. Um, the sympathetic innervation to this smooth muscle will cause the cells to constrict, to contract and constrict the tube. And that's what we're seeing here. We're still seeing a slightly constricted tube, which is what's giving us that wrinkled end endothelium. So uh, less blood can pass through the tube. This is really important because we don't have enough blood to go around the body. So it's directed to the bits of the body that need it. Um, I think the classic example is to your skin. If you're hot, these blood vessels, this smooth muscle would relax, the blood vessel would dilate and more blood would flow to your skin and you'd lose heat. If you're cold, this smooth muscle will contract, the blood vessel will constrict, vasoconstriction, um, and less blood will flow to the surface of your skin and you'll lose less heat. Uh, and you just need sympathetic innovation for this. You just need to switch it on or switch it off, generally speaking. Now, if you were wearing um, a coat, you might call it a tunic and you might wear multiple layers of coats. You might have multiple tunics. That's what blood vessels have. Um, so that endothelium, the tunica intima, the, um, the inner coat, is made up of that, epithelium, that endothelium plus the supportive connective tissue which is often a little bit elastic. There's often an elastic layer there, which is what you can see there. That, that is a little bit stretchy. So the tunica intima is just the, the endothelium plus the supportive tissue. The supportive connective tissue. And then you have the tunica media, which is actually most of this. So the tunica media are these layers of smooth muscle. So the tunica media is really, really thick in really, really big arteries, and it's fairly thick in medium-sized arteries. And look, it's still thick in these small-sized arteries down here. So that's the tunica media. The smooth muscle layers, which are mostly cells running in rings around the artery and the connective tissue supporting them. And there might be a little bit of an elastic layer on the outside. Well, there will be quite a significant elastic layer on the outside in big arteries, big elastic arteries like like the aorta and its branches, right? And it's that tunica media, look, that's, that's an artery and the tunica media is thick. That's a vein and the tunica media is thin. It still has, the vein has also got the tunica intima, that intimate coat, that inner coat, but it's less wrinkled because that smooth muscle isn't isn't constricting the, the vein so much. Uh, veins, of course, veins are receiving the blood after the blood's gone through a capillary bed. So the pressure in that blood vessel is much lower. So it doesn't need as much muscle. It doesn't need to be a stronger blood vessel to withstand those pressures. And also we were talking about vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Uh, that doesn't really happen so much with the veins, but we can see, so it does have a tunica intima. Um, that's quite a good, that's quite a good bit there, right? It has a tunica intima next to the lumen, uh, and then we have a tunica media, which is much thinner than the tunica media of the, of the artery, which has got multiple layers in it. So in arteries and veins, we have the tunica intima, the inner coat, endothelium and support. We have the tunica media, the uh, layers of smooth muscle, and then we have an outer coat, the tunica externa, um, also called the tunica adventitia. So adventitia just means additional, so it's like the additional coat. Um, that, that is, very, that is the, the outermost layer. Um, 
which is kind of difficult to distinguish from the tissue around it, right? And that is its function. So the tunica externa is a connective tissue covering of the, of the artery or the vein that's holding it all together, but it also blends with the surrounding tissue um, to hold it in place. And that's what we're seeing there. So the tunica externa has got fibroblasts in it and collagen. And again, um, if we look at the vein, that also has a tunica externa, but it's not as obvious, is it? It's the tunica media, that this, that's the most obvious bit. Right. Uh, oh, the other thing about blood vessels is when you look at them histologically, because we have cells in the blood going around the body, you might see cells in the lumen and other bits and bobs, depending upon how the section has been prepared. Right, okay, so this is, this is, this is a, a section with transverse sections through an artery and a vein. Let's go and have a look at another tissue. I think bowel would be good. And let's have a look and look at <laughs> look at some blood vessels in the wild, as it were, right? So we are going to want to identify, we're going to try and identify arteries and veins on this section of small intestine. Um, so we're using those things that we just we just talked about to work out what we're looking at, right? So small intestine, we've got we've got two. That, right, there's the there's the lumen of the small intestine and the, the the epithelium and what have you. Now we've got one layer of muscle and another layer of muscle. Um, there we go. So there's a layer of muscle. There's two layers of muscle. There is what I'm trying to say. There's a layer of muscle going around the gut tube, a layer of muscle running the length of the gut tube, and they squeeze, and that's how you push the contents along. If we look in between those two layers of muscle, we should see lots of lovely blood vessels. Also, if we look in the submucosa, because the gastrointestinal tract has got oh, there's some good ones. Has got a really good blood supply, because that's where our nutrients are going, right? Um, okay, so. Um, by the way, very, very big blood vessels, don't, the cells then don't get enough nutrients from the blood that's running through them. So they have small blood vessels in their walls. You know, think about how big the aorta is, um, vasa vasorum, and they have little nerves as well. So you, you can find blood vessels in the <laughs> outer layers of the of the walls of big blood vessels. Right, there we go. So we've got two two blood vessels there. So we, we often do find arteries and veins running together. Uh, taking blood in, taking blood away. Now, which one do you think is the artery and which one do you think is the vein or arteriole and venule, if you like? So the one on the right, you can see, can't you? Uh, the one on the right is nice, that's another tip, the one on the right is nice and round, nice and circular. Arteries often hold their shape because they've got that nice muscular ball. So the, the circle on the right has got a thicker tunica uh, media, so more layers of smooth muscle, whereas the vessel on the left, the tube on the left, has a thinner tunica media, so that's the vein. So... Can I, ooh, can I get them both in? Just about, need a bit more light, don't we? But, can you see there? We can, so we've got some cells in the lumen, so those are cells of the blood. Look, you can see that lovely endothelium, particularly in the, uh, in the arteriole. And you can see the smooth muscle cells running around it. And then outside of that, you can see the fibroblasts linking that blood vessel to the connective tissue of the, of the small intestine. So we're looking at endothelium, tunica intima, and the supporting connective tissue layer. We're seeing smooth muscle, tunica media, uh, and then we're seeing the tunica externa, more connective tissue tying it all together, fibroblasts and whatnot. Lovely. Ooh, what's that? That looks similar, but that is different. Can you see how... Artery and vein, look at that. Now is that an artifact from sectioning or preparing the tissue, or is that an actual tube? And if it's a tube, what is it? Oh, I wonder if, uh, let's, have a, let's have a roam around, see what we can see. So we should find a number of blood vessels in this uh, plane between the two, there's some diddy ones, two, the two muscle layers. Some uh, okay. 
Look at that, there's a... There's an artery in a vein again. So that artery, or arterial, it's got a lovely round shape, whereas the vein has got a little bit smushed. But we can see in the vein, you can still see the endothelium, smooth muscle, connective tissue. That's not what I'm looking for, but look, we're using our skills at identifying blood vessels on histology sections. Uh, bom, bom, bom. Same again, or similar. Let's see, there's another, another pair. I know what. Ah, oh, look at that. All right. What is that? That's a lymphatic vessel. And we're looking at a valve in the lymphatic vessel there. So lymphatic vessels are like blood vessels, but you can see what we're missing there. We're missing the tunica media. We're missing the smooth muscle, aren't we? All right. Uh, there's the artery and vein nearby. Um, have we got any more of those? Oh look, there's another one! So there are lots of lymphatics in the gastrointestinal tract. One of the reasons for that is that fat is passed into the lymphatic system uh, and back into the blood supply for various reasons. But look, that there, that's a real tube and that's a valve. So the lymphatic cell there, <laughs> the reason I like looking at these is one of the hardest things as a teacher of anatomy to do is to convince students that the lymphatic system exists. Because you can find some lymph nodes in the, uh, in the cadaver, but most of the time it's invisible. It's carrying a, a clear watery fluid, which is invisible, through tiny vessels, which are invisible, we never dissect out. But here, histologically, we can find lymphatic vessels. And I think I can convince you that the artery and the vein here look different to the lymphatic vessels nearby. Um, sure, this one looks great because we can see that beautiful valve that jumps out at us. But look at the walls. Now, it is true that very small venules will lose the tunica media pretty much and they will look like a lymphatic vessel. But this is not a tiny venule, is it? Um, we can see the scale that we're looking at there. Um, there we can still see the tunica media. Whereas at this scale, um, this looks different. And we see that valve as well. So lymphatic flow is at a very low pressure. And ah, the, the flow of fluid, there are, in large lymphatic vessels, it does actually have a muscular wall. And there is peristalsis which moves the fluid along. But much of the flow of lymphatic fluid through lymphatic vessels is through changes in pressure in the torso, in the muscles and arteries, squeezing small veins. It's very, very low pressure. And, the, the, the lymphatic fluid slowly passes back up to um, where it drains back into the, into the, into the venous system. Uh, um, uh, so I was going to keep this one short, but look, I've gone off on a tangent, haven't I? But uh, I'm sorry, this is just, it's cool. I like looking at this. But um, that's what arteries and veins and their little ditty arteries and venules look like histologically that's why we talk about arteries having um <laughs> don't get distracted sam uh, that's why we talk about arteries having muscular walls and veins being less having less muscle in their walls because they do that's what they look like down the microscope that shows you the structure of the artery versus the vein and um hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable with the structure down the microscope, the tunica intima, media and externa. I hope that was useful and interesting. Um, see you next week.